I had this crazy idea the other day of creating a portfolio that's non-diversified. I mostly had that idea because I thought to myself, of the major indices, there's really only a few stocks that I really like, and I usually invest in other stocks besides those just for the sake of diversification. And just for the sake of maybe one of those few stocks that I do invest in um, have a rough time or have some difficult volatility, things like that. So just for the sake of hedging myself or diversifying. Then I thought to myself, what if I put some of my favorite stocks into an M1 Finance portfolio and actually started to invest in it? You know, put my money where my mouth is. Can I create a portfolio that can beat the major indices and be non-diversified? And that's exactly what I created in my opinion. I'd like to introduce you guys to a portfolio called Element. The reason why it's called Element is because it only has five stocks in it. And these are some of my favorite stocks that in my opinion meet my criteria for what I really like to invest in. First, I wanna compare it to some other very popular ETFs. Uh, the first of those is QQQ. Now, over a five year time frame, this portfolio, which is called Element, has gone up 96.68%. For comparison, QQQ over a five year period has gone up 92.78%. So it's gone up 4% 4, 4 more than QQQ over the last five years. This portfolio has a dividend yield of 4.26%. QQQ has a dividend yield of 0.83%. And just as a reminder, QQQ is another way of saying the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ obviously won't have that high of a dividend yield. It's more known for its growth. But this portfolio actually has more growth than the NASDAQ over the past five years. And it has more than four times the dividend yield. That is impressive, in my opinion. Why don't we go ahead and compare it to another ETF like SPY, which is a little bit more diversified than the NASDAQ and obviously has a higher dividend yield. So the S&P uh, 500 ETF, also known as SPY, has a 1.82% dividend yield. Once again, this one has a 4.2% dividend yield. SPY over the past five years has gone up 44%, and this portfolio over the past five years has gone up 96%. Now, one thing I wanna make clear is just because this particular portfolio has gone up so much in the past five years, doesn't mean it's gonna do as well over the next five years. And I'm not trying to advocate that past performance can be future performance. I am simply uh, adjusting this as a benchmark. And as long as we're in the same ballpark of some of the more popular ETFs, um, that's pretty much what I was looking for. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at each of the stocks and why I picked the holdings. Now, first and foremost, I did pick a Guggenheim Strategic Opportunities Fund which happens to be a multi-asset bond fund. Um, GOF is actually one of my favorite high dividend monthly payers. Uh, this one pays out every month towards the end of the month and the dividend yield over the course of the entire year is pretty close to 11%. Right now, I think we're at a pretty good buying opportunity and overall, it hasn't been around for that long. But for the time that it's been here, I think it's been very impressive. I like to diversify with bonds in general um, I don't like to have all my money to stocks, for example, and some people think about having like an 80-20 split with stocks and bonds. Um, here is my way of diversifying with bonds. The other four stocks are pretty well-known high growth stocks. However, one thing you'll notice is each of these stocks pay a dividend. And that's why I didn't include stocks like Amazon or like Netflix or like Google even though those are all very high growth stocks as well. So that was one of the criterias for picking each of these stocks. They had to have a dividend yield. And I'm not just talking about a 0.5% dividend yield. I wanted something at least pretty decent and something that can grow its dividend yield pretty quickly throughout the years. Let's go one by one to uh, the rest of these stocks. So the next stock I wanna talk about is Visa actually. Ticker symbol V. So Visa over the course of the long term has been absolutely crushing it. It does look, it does look like we're getting, we're getting some volatility over the past couple weeks. But for the most part, it doesn't see that much volatility. I mean, 
the periods that it does have volatility are pretty much when the rest of the market has volatility. But for the most part, even after those tough times, Visa tends to outperform the rest of the stock market. Case in point, look how much higher we are at this point in time than the high made here at the end of September of 2018. For reference, with the NASDAQ, we're actually lower than we were um, around September 2018. So Visa, we obviously didn't see that. And over the past four to five weeks, we've actually been in somewhat of a consolidation mode for the NASDAQ. However, on Visa, we're hardly seeing that. We're mostly seeing somewhat sideways consolidation. It's possible that we just tip over. But Visa has what I like to call a defensive growth profile, similar to the other stocks that I'm about to show you. So why don't we move on to the next stock on the list, which is Microsoft. What One thing you'll notice with Microsoft is it also has that defensive high growth profile. It looks pretty similar to Visa, doesn't it? So as you guys can tell, over the past three to four weeks, we actually haven't seen that much of a drop. And the high here, which is made around uh, April 22nd, 2019, is actually still much higher than the high here made uh, around September 2018. And currently, we're higher than we were in September 2018. Compare that once again to the NASDAQ, where we're actually lower uh, than that period. So Microsoft, also just like Visa, deals with volatility in a very healthy way. So that's one thing I like about Microsoft. The next stock I want to talk about is Pepsi. And Pepsi, once again, to no one's surprise, actually has that defensive growth profile. We are higher than the high here made um, towards the beginning of January 2018. And we're higher than the high made around September 2018, which is the period that I've been uh, talking about. Pepsi looks a lot similar to the index that it's in, which is actually XLP. Um, also known as consumer staples. Why don't I quickly go ahead and show you guys XLP, which is right here. It looks very similar, except one thing you'll notice is um, Pepsi actually made a higher high than the high here made in January 2018. So it's actually performing stronger than the index that it's in, as you guys can see from that discrepancy. Even though for the most part it follows it, it's still one of the stronger stocks within consumer staples. So I do like to see um, that sort of outer performance. The last thing I want to talk about is Apple. So Apple is a bit unique in the sense that it's not the same defensive growth profile that the other stocks have. Uh, in fact, we're much lower than we were around the 52 week high here on September 2018. Currently, we've retraced, I want to say about at least 0.5. Yeah, so 0.5% of this entire rally from December 2024, uh, December 2018. Uh, and currently, it doesn't look like we're at a bottom necessarily, um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we creep a little lower. Once again, Apple doesn't have that defensive growth uh, profile, but the reason why I like Apple is because it represents so much of the NASDAQ and so much of the S&P 500 that whenever we're talking about passive investments, Whenever we're talking about buying a little piece of America, which you know Apple has about what close to a trillion dollars in market cap, I think of stocks like Apple. And so Apple and Microsoft are actually two of the largest stocks right now. And I think that they'll continue to be two of the largest stocks going forward within the next five years. And I don't think that that's a far-fetched prediction. So this is along the lines of having something that, you know, even though it's non-diversified, I only have five stocks in here. I still think um, buying a little piece of America is important, and this is my way of doing that. So that's going to wrap up my video of my non-diversified five stock portfolio. Um, because I believe in it so much and because I'm making a video about it, I went ahead and I invested $1,000 to put my money where my mouth is, and we'll see how it goes. One thing I like about it is I'll be getting dividends every single month and dividends compound um, much quicker than a quarterly dividend, especially over the course of the long term. But even in the course of a short term, um, we'll start to see that trend. So 
Uh, I like to have something that has dividends and grows quickly and is also defensive. And so I thought, why not make a portfolio about that? So once again, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, I'll see you guys in the next one.